This project was supposed to be quick and simple. It was not. For me, knit fabrics are right up there with velvet. I try a knit project once every like three to five years, always thinking that it'll be easy, and it always turns into such a frustrating nightmare that I swear off knits and apparently block the whole experience from my memory, because the next time I try it, there's always the same set of problems that spring up to surprise me. I've never been very highly motivated to sew knits. Knit clothing is just a little too easy to buy. It's cheap, and it's a bit more available in natural fibers, like cotton at least. Because it stretches, I don't have the same qualms about the fit that I do with other store-bought clothing. So, ever since I started trying to make the bulk of my wardrobe, knits have always been on my cheat list. Why should I spend time making a basic knit top that I could go buy for 10 bucks, when I could spend that time instead making wool skirts and fitted dresses and other more special pieces? But after making that video on planning out your wardrobe, it got me thinking about knits again. It got me motivated and re-inspired to make my own basics. I'm also really frustrated with the quality of the underwear I own. <laughs> I've been buying from Airy for over a decade, and my underwear from 10 years ago are holding up better than my underwear purchased last year. Lingerie elastic is just such garbage. Also, elastic really starts to add up and jump the price if you try and make underwear yourself. I liked the idea of making a pattern that used the knit fabric as a binding instead. So I decided to make a simple set of knit underwear. No problem. To make my pattern, I started with the nicest, most comfortable, least stretched or warped pair of underwear I had. I laid it out and smoothed and flattened it, then traced around it, noting the width of the elastic waistband. Then I used a tracing wheel to mark the curve of the front leg hole. When I removed the original pair, the tracing wheel left a nice line of perforations in the paper that were easy for me to trace. If you don't have a tracing wheel, you can just like stab it with a pin, marking every half inch or so. It'll get you close enough. Then I straightened all of the lines out. I removed the waistband and folded it in half. This is important because knit always stretches and warps, and my original tracing was definitely not symmetrical. This way I can make sure the straight lines are all at right angles with each other and consolidate the curved lines. So this is my back piece, and you can see that I've got it marked with lines for the front piece and the liner piece. Now I just need to trace it out a couple of times, and I'll come up with this. I don't want to use lingerie elastic with this project, so instead I'll need to make a waistband and a leg hole piece, by measuring the corresponding parts of the pattern and guesstimating how wide they need to be. Now I'm ready to cut out a prototype. I have three different fabrics for this project. Two are an interesting linen knit that I found on Etsy, but I'm definitely not cutting into that yet. First I'm going to try the pattern out with a cheaper cotton spandex interlock, also from Etsy. Now, to sew them, I'm basically following the order of operations from the original pair. So starting with the liner, I need to serge along the front edge where it will be left open and unattached. Then I pin the front, back, and liner pieces all together along the crotch seam and stitch them up. I immediately realized I did that wrong and tried it again. There we go, that's how it's supposed to look. The seam folded neatly to the inside. Now I'm just flattening that liner into position and pinning it into place. Next, I'm going to finish those leg holes. I pinned one side of the leg band along the opening and then surged it. Okay, these leg bands turned out looking pretty good. However, what I'm going to do is flip it around and fold it down over the stitching and stitch it down again. Um, it does fit, but only barely. I need to widen it out. I think about an eighth of an inch will be perfect. Not too wide to where I need to trim it down again after that, but wide enough that I'm not stretching it to try and make it work. Um, how I'm going to stitch this is with a double needle. These are really great for stitching with uh, knits. Sergers I love for anything that's going to be on the inside, but these are great for exposed stitches. They basically make a zigzag stitch. It's 
functionally the same as a zigzag stitch, but on the outside you have that nice neat double row of stitching, so it just looks a lot more professional. And you can use it with a regular machine, although it does need to be a modern machine, because modern machines have that wide opening at the base for the needle to go through. My antique machine just has a little circle that you can't do a zigzag stitch with, or two needles. Okay, so it might be slightly back to the drawing board. This needle is just too wide to work with how narrow of a strip I'm trying to stitch here. It was just kind of like falling off the edge. Um, so I switched to just a regular zigzag stitch, but I don't like the way those look in general. And as you can see, it's kind of stretching out the fabric pretty bad. So what I'm considering trying next is cut these strips wider so that I can just fold them in half and stitch them on at one piece and so then they would fold out like this and then maybe I could use the double needle along the underwear side of it. I'm gonna try that. Okay it wasn't perfect but I think that worked well enough. My only real issue with it is that it still is kind of r rippling like it definitely stretched it some. However you know when you're actually wearing them they'll be stretched out anyways so I'm thinking it'll be fine maybe hopefully. <laughs> Now, for the next step, I'm going to sew only one side seam. I simply serged it, but then decided to top stitch it. On the original pair, the seam is not top stitched, but the elastic is tacked down at the base. It just seemed easier to me to stitch the whole thing. Now I'm folding and serging the waistband piece along the whole top edge. But then, before I top stitch this edge, I remembered to change my presser foot out for a walking foot. These help with sewing knits because the foot lifts and moves with the fabric, which cuts down on the amount it gets stretched out. After stitching that, I just need to pin and serge together the last side seam and then top stitch it. Okay, well, they're not exactly nice, but they are done. Um, the stitching is pretty terrible. <laughs> Let's just be real. It just don't look very good. Um, and also the stretching was a problem, and e I think that the uh, walking foot helped a bit, but it kind of did these weird things where it would like catch and get stuck for a minute, so it's not good stitching. <laughs> so I think I'm going to finish the other pair and then test them out, and if they are successful or if they're not, I will adjust the pattern and make more. <laughs> I remember now why I hate sewing knit. Good morning. A little bit of a rainy, wet day to be a chicken out there, but eh, I guess it's a nice trade-off from the heat. Anyways, I wore the other pair uh, yesterday evening and last night and this morning, and they're like 90% good. This is perfectly comfortable, fits perfectly well. Um, the only thing that I'm uncertain about is this edge right here. It's a little bit bulkier and tighter than my original pair was, which makes sense because the originals just had a very narrow strip of elastic, so they had a lot more stretch to them. It's not bad, and it's probably just because it's thicker than I'm used to, so I'm sure that I could make them all this way and be just fine. However, I'm going to try one more thing before I break out the linen, and that is to basically make it without this strip here. So I'm going to take the raw edge and just serge it fold it under, and then do the double stitched row. Yeah, the construction starts out exactly the same as the first pair, but I deviated after sewing in the liner and instead pinned both side seams and serged them. Then I serged around the raw leg hole. Then at the sewing machine, I folded that edge under and top stitched it. For the new waistband construction, I switched the machine back to a single needle and sewed the ends of the waistband together. Then I opened them and folded the waistband into a tube, then pinned that seam to the center back. I serged the band around the waist, then top stitched. Overall, a much easier and cleaner construction than the factory method I originally copied. Okay, so just tried these on and the waistband is again fine. <sighs> I'm not sure because, okay, they look fine and they look secure enough and like I have no, you know, doubts about it falling apart. Like I think that this is a fine enough way to do it and it definitely saves an extra little strip of fabric for each pair that I make. However, they're actually tighter around the leg than the first version. These would probably stretch out over the course of me wearing them, but I don't want them to, I don't want to make a whole bunch if I'm not sure <laughs> that they're going to wind up being comfortable. I don't know. I don't know. We're figuring it out as we go. 
Okay, daylight was burning and I was still a bit indecisive at this point. I decided to add back in the leg bands. I don't know why sergers are like this, but if you surge two layers, they will stretch. If you surge one layer, it will not. That's the big problem I was having with trying to eliminate the leg bands. It just makes the edge too rigid, and then it ended up fitting too tightly. So if I wanted to avoid lingerie elastic, it was just going to have to be a bit bulkier than my original pair. That's the price for trying to make an elasticless underwear pattern. I decided to move on to my linen knits and get them cut out, though I did find some white and black cotton interlock in my stash, which I figured I could use for some of the leg bands and waistbands if I was short on fabric. I'm not sure if my linen was cut wildly off grain or if this is just how knit works, but look at this. Look at how twisted that is. Laying it out to remove the twist was going to waste a ton, so I decided that the best move was probably just to lay the fabric out as a single layer and cut the underwear one piece at a time. Alright, here's the final tally. I was able to cut two more out of this nude cotton. I was able to cut four out of the mint. However, I was not able to get out the waistbands or the leg bands, so I ended up having to cut those out of the white fabric. Then I did a little bit better of a job with conserving fabric and arranging things with the green. So I was able to cut the waistbands and leg bands out of it. However, I had to piece a lot because I wasn't able to cut them long enough strips. So here we go. Four, eight, ten, plus the four I already made. Not too bad. Although I was hoping to get a lot more out of the linen, it did shrink considerably a lot more than the cotton did, which I kind of knew would happen, but I didn't really predict how much it would shrink. Now I can start to speed up production, assembly style. I'm pinning the fronts, backs, and liners together. Then at the serger, I'm stitching the side seams, the crotch seam, and the raw edge of the liner, all in one go. Look at that beautiful pile. Now I need to work on the leg bands and waistbands. I tried to sew the ends together on my regular sewing machine, but the machine was just not having it. So I decided to sew them on my serger instead. This was much simpler and quicker, but the downside is that it'll make the seams bulkier and I won't be able to open them up and split the bulk. But at this point I was losing patience with machine jams, so I took the trade off. Then I started pinning the waistbands and leg bands to the underwear. I only put a couple pins in each at the center front and center back. I've been eyeballing things and not pinning much, but this is to make sure that the two sides stay roughly even. Then I surged around the waistband and leg holes and... It sure looks like I'm sewing that waistband on the wrong side out. Why am I doing that? Surely I noticed. Okay, I guess I didn't. Okay, I might have figured something out. So, looking at this one I just stitched, the waistband got super stretched out. This is the first one that I've sewn linen to linen. And this linen is just very stretchy and very instable. Um, so the waistband got super stretched out, so I tried turning this lever, I don't even know what it's called, but I turned it from the in, which it's usually at, up to 1.5, which is like a scrunching versus stretching. And then I tried it on the leg hole and it still does have stretch, but it does not appear to be stretched out. So this might have been the answer all along. We'll see with the next one. I just took that waistband off and restitched it and look, it's actually not rumpled now. I mean, it might be by the time I get the top stitching done, but at least here it's fine. And it still does have good stretch. All right, I stitched this entirely on the 1.8 setting, and as you can see, there's almost no stretching out, so that's good. I'm going to go ahead and skip forward in my pile and do the top stitching on this piece because I want to see how much it stretches out past this, and I might have solved it. <laughs> okay, this is frustrating. They are turning out all right. Like, they're definitely wearable. They just don't look very good. <laughs> Um, but the other thing is, the way the waistband is stretching out, they fit and they're very comfortable, but they're a little bit loose. And there's not really a way to regulate that without elastic. Now, the whole reason I want to stay away from normal underwear elastic is because I don't trust any of it to actually be quality and well-made and not fall apart. So what I'm thinking I'm going to do is call it quits for the night. I still have five more pairs left to finish. But I kind of want to run to Joann's tomorrow morning and get some more of just standard non-roll elastic about half an inch wide to sew into just the waistband. Because this, 
even though it's stretched out and doesn't look very good, it at least is comfortable and it, like, I think that's fine. But this is more functionally what I want to make sure stays tight enough. I don't have time for a proper chicken update in this video, but this is my new favorite rooster. I've currently got about 10 juvenile roosters running around my backyard. I honestly have too many chickens. I'm not sure how much longer the city is going to let me get away with it, <laughs> but I love I am Kamani's. They're like my dream chicken. I've been wanting an I am Kamani for so long. And this little boy is just the best personality. He's so sweet and patient. And we pick him up and he'll like eat snacks right out of our hands. And then when we put him back on the ground, he'll just like kind of hover around us. So we're going to call him Goose, I think, because, well, you should hear him cluck sometime. Like, apparently I am Kamani's. They don't cluck like chickens. They honk like geese. It's really funny. So yes. Good boy. Would you like to say something? Yes. Look at this patient chicken. He just sits there. He's so chill. All right. All right. You can go back outside. I'll get you a snack. Look at this bird. Oh my goodness. He's so beautiful. <gasps> Okay, next morning, I think I figured out the mistake, and it probably should have been pretty obvious, but you know, sometimes you just have to make the mistake to understand why it's a mistake. So here is my linen pair. As you can see, not a lot of rippling. Here is my cotton pair. Lots and lots of rippling. I thought I have had underwear before that did not have elastic waistbands. It just had a self-fabric binded waistband, kind of like this. So I thought I could get away with it. And on these, I think I can. The rippling is unattractive, but like the fit is not affected. The linen, <laughs> basically the reason it's not rippled is because it stretched out and stretched all the way out just in the process of sewing it. This is my waistband um, pattern. And this is how far <laughs> these underwear stretched just, just by sewing them. So like, that is pretty much still even. Like it stretched a tiny bit, but not much at all. This is way off. So here's what I have figured out. I completely forgot. These aren't just cotton. These are cotton spandex. So yeah, duh. Of course you don't have to put elastic in the waistband. The elastic, the, the, the whole thing is elastic. But these linen, these are just straight up linen. There is no elasticity to it by definition. So you have to put elastic in the waistband. That is what I've learned. Okay. So, off to Joanne's to buy some elastic. Okay, so that quick little trip to Joanne's turned into about two hours. Here's what happened. So, I remembered how much I struggled with knit the last time I tried to make a project. Like, just a simple knit project, and it just wouldn't work. Nothing I tried would work, you know, I'd use the walking foot, I would use the twin needles, I would try zigzag stitches, my serger, everything, and it just was not ever coming out right. Um, and I remember last time I did a ton of research and figured out that, oh, it's because I need a cover stitch machine, because that is what every hem on every piece of knitwear that you have from a store is made with. And I did a bunch of research on it, but I couldn't find any cheap. And at the time I was like, I can't spend that kind of money on a sewing machine. So I just kind of let it go. And then it's been several years since that project. Last night I did that research again because I had forgotten. And then I found basically some cheaper ones on Amazon. They were between like $450 and $650. And that's a lot of money, but like for my stage of life and my job, spending that kind of money on a sewing machine isn't unquestionably too much. However, the reviews were scary. That's a lot of money to spend for something that you don't know is going to work right and you don't know if they're going to make returning it impossible. So then I was looking at Baby Lock because that is what my machines are. I had a sewing teacher who ran a Baby Lock dealership when I was a kid. Her dealership is no longer in business, so I was looking for Baby Lock cover stitch machines on eBay. I found two. 
One was going to be about 500 after taxes and shipping. The other was probably going to be closer to 600 after taxes and shipping. The problem with buying from a random eBay person instead of a dealership is that you just don't know what you're going to get. If there's a problem, there's no warranty, there's no backup. You've got to just figure it out yourself. And I've never worked with a cover stitch machine before. So I was thinking about it. I was strongly considering it. I was on the fence and hesitating. So then this morning I ran to Joann's to pick up my elastic and they have a Viking dealership inside Joann's and I know the guy who was working it that day. He worked there when I was working at Joann's like back in 2013 and he remembers me. So I was just asking him like, you know, what kind of used options, like I know cover stitch machines are kind of like uncommon. Then it turned out they had two. <laughs> Apparently a lot of sergers are meant to be convertible cover stitch machines, which I had kind of read that online. I just didn't realize how many there were. But the thing people online kept complaining about was that it's kind of difficult to convert it between a serger and a cover stitch machine. That's not a problem though, because I have a serger, so I don't need to convert it. I just need a dedicated cover lock machine. So he had two. I was like, oh, this one looks simple. How much is this one? And he was like, uh, about a thousand dollars. And I was like, okay, I can't do that. So then I, would do, I wasn't even gonna ask about the other one because it looked a lot more complex, but then I did anyways. And he's like, well, this one just came in. I know you, I'll give you a deal, 300. And I was like, what's wrong with it? <laughs> so I sat at Joann's for about two hours with YouTube open with, you know, Google with the manual trying to figure this stupid thing out. And I did. So I bought it. Which makes these officially the most expensive underwear. So here it is. All converted over. It's not perfect, but pretty darn close. Good enough, right? So let's test it out on a cotton spandex pair. Ready? Ready? Wow. Finally, finally seeing actual quality results made me really dislike all of the other pairs that I'd done without the cover stitch machine. So I started going through them one by one and seam ripping anything that didn't turn out very good and anything that I thought I could do better now. And now it's time to see if I can get a good result with linen. Fingers crossed. I cut elastic for each waistband and then used my regular sewing machine to stitch the ends together. Then I folded the waistband into a tube around the elastic and basted them together. I stitched the waistband to the underwear, and then I did have to remember to pull out that basting thread, or the waistband wouldn't stretch. One thing I'd like to note here, my serger suddenly started skipping stitches. It hadn't done that all during the rest of the project, and I realized that it was skipping stitches only wherever the needles were passing through the elastic in the waistband. However, the top stitching will reinforce this edge, so I decided it wasn't a big deal. Update, I switched to the narrow stitch instead of the wide one. Much, much better. The problem with the wide one is that it's going off the edge and then it's kind of scrunching up through this thin layer of just the linen. The narrow edge stays all the way on the first row of stitching. So much better, much better. <sighs> How many more? Oh my gosh, it's like Friday morning. This was supposed to be like a day and a half long project. And I only have six pairs completely done. I have three more of these to finish. These two, which I had to take more apart. And then I have these three, which I need to now seam rip because these are the stretched out ones. Oh, oh my gosh. All right, I can finish this. Okay, update. It's been a few hours. These pairs are all done with the serging and they just need the cover stitching and they will be complete. These three pairs, the first linen pairs I made, I seam ripped out the old twin stitch, twin needle stitching, and I seam ripped off the waistband so that I can insert elastic. So these need serged, just the waistband again, and then they need the cover stitching. And then I will finally be done with this stupid project. Also, I have had a really hard time just at the like seam overlap just controlling the serger. It's turned out pretty terrible almost every time. So, eh, learning curve though. Some of my last pairs I did, okay, well not that one. <laughs> okay, that one looks good. Some of the last pairs I did were getting better.
First off, I need to say that I hate that the answer to this project was spending money on a new sewing machine. There are many ways to sew knit, I explored a lot of them in this video, and a lot of people are very happy with their results when they use the methods I tried. A walking foot, a double needle, a zigzag stitch. I do think that's the main point I need to clarify. I didn't buy a cover stitch machine because it's the only way to sew knit or it's the only right way or because the other methods I tried were unworkable. I bought it because I was dissatisfied with my results. I was so dissatisfied that I knew it was going to put me off trying knit again for a long time. And I'm at a place where I want to sew my own basic clothing, knits included. But realistically, it's only going to happen if I'm happy with my results. And I wasn't going to be happy with the results unless they looked just as good, if not better, than store-bought. At the intro to this video, I asked, why should I spend time making a basic knit top that I could go buy for 10 bucks? Well, that is the thesis and the challenge. In order to make it worth my time, I need the basic knit top to be better than store-bought. Whether I achieve that by using a beautiful linen fabric or an interesting pattern with unique details, or by making simple basics cheaply with a consistent fit, there has to be some advantage, something that makes it worth the effort. And sewing with the tools I had made the process too frustrating with too poor of results to make sewing knits worthwhile to me. That's why I think buying the cover stitch machine was a good decision for me. <laughs> but not everyone can or should buy one, and that's all right. Let's discuss the cost breakdown, shall we? For linen and underwear, the fabric costs $12.95 per yard. I bought four yards at once, so when we divvy up the shipping cost and sales tax, that adds $4.52 to the price, bringing us to $17.47 per yard. I only got four pairs out of each yard, so each pair cost $4.37, which isn't too bad. However, in order to make these linen underwear actually work, I had to put elastic inside the waistband, which added about another dollar to each pair, bringing us to $5.37. Still not bad. I could definitely buy underwear cheaper, but probably not linen underwear. For the cotton spandex underwear, I bought one yard and it was $6.50 per yard. However, I purchased it alone and with taxes and shipping, it ended up costing $16.13, which is a little outrageous in my opinion. However, I needed no additional elastic and I was able to make six pairs of underwear from this yard, which means that each pair only cost $2.69. And the final test. Factoring in the cost with the time, will making underwear in the future be worth it or not? I think, yes, it is worth it. However, I'm experiencing a huge confidence boost right now with knits in general because I'm anticipating it being a much smoother and more satisfying sewing process now that I've got the cover stitch machine. I will probably only make underwear from cotton spandex knits in the future. The linen is very thin and loosely woven, and I'm not sure at all how durable it's going to be. I have no such fears or hesitations about the cotton spandex pairs. The cotton only cost $2.69 per pair, and I'm sure I could find cheaper fabric, maybe even locally, which would bring down the cost even further, maybe to like a dollar per pair. That is definitely cheap enough to be worth my time, especially when you consider the added benefit of consistent patterning and sizing and quality, and not having to worry about the stores changing their styles or only having my size available in ugly prints. I'll also stick with cotton because having to add elastic into the waistband of the linen underwear did make them bulkier and decrease their comfortability by about one point, which kind of neutralizes the bonus point comfortability of the linen itself. It's a bit sad because I do love this linen knit. It's so soft and meshy, and I'm excited about the idea of making it into a summery dress or tank top or a bando bra. I'd love to see how it does as a modern fit piece of clothing combined with the moisture wicking properties of natural linen. However, I will need to carefully consider exactly how I want to use this linen, now that I know that it has absolutely no elasticity. So, good project overall. I learned a lot, tested out a lot of new theories, ruled out a lot of bad ideas, and I got a new sewing machine. I hope it was useful to you too, and if so, I'll see you next time. So, um, how much seam ripping did this project take? <laughs>